Well, good morning, everyone. So glad that you could be a part of my life today. So happy to have you uh, on this journey with me as we seek to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. I hope you're all, your week is going well. We're reached the, we've reached the midpoint of the week, and we are so uh, thankful so far for God's presence with us. How, obviously, at Corner saddened and shocked at the sudden death of Vicki Valdivinos, and uh, certainly we're, being, we're going to be in prayer for her family uh, as we, uh, unra you know, just grapple with her sudden departure to be with the Lord. And that's the thing that we're encouraged and excited about, that the fact that she's with the Lord, uh, but we are certainly going to miss her and certainly going to, uh, you know, uh, definitely fill a hole in our lives because, uh, she's not with us any longer. But, uh, we'll be passing along arrangements as soon as we receive those, and we'll just, uh, keep you updated if those, those of you that hang out at Cornerstone regularly. Uh, I want to invite you to look with me this morning uh, at in Romans chapter 8. Uh, we're going to start at verse 1 and just kind of see how far we get. Uh, you know, uh, Romans 8 is a very powerful chapter in, in, in God's Word. Uh, Paul's writing the letter to the Roman church, introducing himself. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I, we said before when we began reading Romans uh, that uh, Paul had not personally been to Rome. He had not, he didn't plant that church there, and he's on the way as he He's in, prison. he's in prison. He's on his way to Rome to make his defense before Caesar. Uh, and so on the way to, uh, you know, on his journey, he wrote this letter to introduce himself to the church there in Rome. And so there we, we get in this letter a really, really concise and powerful uh you know, uh, I guess, uh, rendering of, of the gospel that Paul had been preaching and, and planting churches with throughout the ancient world. And, and uh, chapter 7, if you know anything about the letter to Romans, uh, is a very powerful chapter as well because it talks about the struggle with sin. You know, and, and Paul gets really candid and, you know, says the things that I want to do, that's not what I do. The things that I don't want to do, that's what I see myself doing. He says, I see in my flesh a law of the flesh. Uh, and I see in my spirit, law of spirit, and they're at war with each other. And and he comes to a conclusion. He says, who's going to save me from this body of death? And basically, who's going to save me from this incapability within me to perfectly keep the law? And he says, I thank my God through my Lord Jesus Christ. He begins to praise God because he realizes, or he, he kind of lets us in on, he knew this, and this is he, he was getting to that point that it's not keeping the law that that whereby we're saved because we're incapable of doing that and what saves us is what jesus christ has done on the cross in on our in our behalf he took our sin upon himself and nailed it to a tree so now we are to walk by the law of the spirit which is that freedom so he begins in verse one of chapter eight there is now there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit now, let's look at that. He said there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Again, Paul uses that phrase, in Christ Jesus, to talk about the identification we have with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. If you look back at, at Romans 6, you see him start this when he talks about, you know, we, we've been baptized with Christ into his death. We've identified, if you will, with Christ's death. Uh, and then we, uh, when we come up out of the water, we identify with the resurrection. It's that identification motive. And, and Paul uh, would describe that more, more, more frequently as being in Christ. In other words, our righteousness is in Christ. It's almost as if we are covered with Christ. We're putting on an outer garment to cover ourselves, which is the righteousness of Christ covering our sin. Paul says that if we're in Christ, that there is no condemnation for us because our sin has been covered. And he said, notice though, he says this, uh, who if those in Christ do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. That word walk, that means literally the manner of life, the way we live. If there's no condemnation for us, if we're in Christ, because we don't walk or live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now, Paul, Paul, you often see, you know, Paul basically making the point there's only if there, there's only two ways that we can live our lives. We're going to either live by the flesh or we're going to live by the spirit. Now, to live by the flesh, according to Paul, is to live under the authority of the law. In other words, we're trying to be made right with God by keeping the law. Uh, we're trying to. Uh, 
you know, try to affect, if you will, our own righteousness and build a righteousness apart from Christ. Either we're going to do that or we're going to walk by the Spirit. Now, if we walk by the Spirit, that means we're allowing the Spirit of Christ to produce in us the righteousness of Christ. You know, if you've been saved, uh, and he makes this point a little bit later, he says in verse, uh, let's see, in verse... Yeah, he says in verse 10, and if Christ is in you, the body's dead because of him, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Uh, basically there he's saying that if you are in Christ, the spirit of God is in you. And we must allow the Spirit of God to lead us as we walk this life. If we do that, we are not relying on our own righteousness or our own ability to try to affect that righteousness through keep, keeping the law. We're allowing the Spirit of God to, to do the works of Christ in us and through us to apply the, 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 the ramifications of the cross to our lives. If we walk by the Spirit, notice again, there is no condemnation. We are free because Jesus Christ has paid the debt. Uh, verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. See, friend, you're not, our freedom is tied up in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He's already done everything necessary for you and I to be set free. Uh, if we could have set ourselves free by being able to perfectly keep the law, then there would have been no need for Jesus to come and die in our place. So today we need as disciples to spend some time praising God for the grace and forgiveness that he's given us. Uh, he has enabled us to be and to become what we never could have become and been on our own. So today, my friend, as you spend some time thinking about what Jesus Christ has done for you, let that thought warm your heart and cause you to just grow in excitement because you know you are no longer in condemnation. Now, I get it. I, I'm like you. I, I struggle with sin every day of my life. Can I get an amen? And, and if that challenges you that, that I said that as a pastor, that I struggle with sin, then you have an inordinate, un, un, a, a deficient understanding of exactly who a pastor is. A pastor is no different than you. Uh, I have uh, my own struggles, my own failures, and I rely daily, moment by moment, upon the grace of God. So we're in the same boat. We all struggle with sin, and yet we also struggle with the sense of condemnation because every time we fail, we, we feel that, that, that accuser come up beside us and begin to say, see there, what kind of Christian are you that you can't even, you, you can't even be righteous for one day? And, and you know, the best thing to do when he accuses you like that is say, you're exactly right. I, in and of myself, cannot be righteous for one day. That's why I don't rely on my flesh. That's why I don't walk by the law of the flesh. That's why I walk by the law of the Spirit, because I trust Christ in His redemption that, that make, lets me know and assures me that I am not condemned by God. I am a dearly loved Son of God because of what Jesus did. So today, let's live a life that acknowledges the fact that it is the cross. And let's make sure that as the Spirit gives us opportunities, we're telling people that. We're letting them know that it's not our righteousness, it's the righteousness of Christ. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for your word. And I just pray, Lord, that you would just help us to understand this. Just open our hearts to realize, Father, we don't walk by the flesh. We walk in the Spirit. Walking in the flesh is going to lead us down paths that are not going to glorify you and is not going to point people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that those of us who know you, God, will allow your spirit inside of us to produce the righteousness of Christ in and through us, that, that he would change us from the inside out, Lord. And, and so that when we are tempted to sin today, when we are uh, tempted to walk in the flesh, I pray that we would quickly seize those things and bring them and bow them before Jesus Christ. And, and I just pray, Lord, that today we would be successful in walking as you have walked, uh, have, have done, have, have, have led us to walk through the cross. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. And I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And again, let's walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. God bless you guys.